Hey everybody, how you doing? Just uh, doing my dishes here and I uh, thought I'd take uh, the opportunity to sort of talk about some of the stuff I've been talking about. So, what I want to talk about are the many, many crises of capitalism. That the COVID-19 virus has revealed the fragility of the capitalist system uh, and its inability to uh, respond rationally to crises. That uh, when, it, when this crisis came up, uh, here in Canada, it was the wholesale abandonment of uh, free market capitalism. The government came in, took control, enacted socialist policies, uh, and is moving uh, in ways to help uh, alleviate this crisis as it unfolds, using socialist measures and enacting socialist ideas. Uh, we can go deeper with that, of course, and of course they're going to want to hand it back to the capitalist death cult when the crisis ends, but for now, we have accepted the base premise, right? The basic premise, that capitalism fails during crisis. Uh, I think you have to be completely delusional at this point to maintain the idea that uh, uh, capitalism is responding rationally during this crisis that it is helping anybody uh, and you have to accept if you have eyes in your head that capitalism uh, has failed us in this moment so the question for me then becomes okay so this crisis is uh, uh, undeniable it is undeniable that capitalism has collapsed here where else has capitalism failed right where, where else has capitalism failed? What other crises uh, exist in our society before the COVID virus that capitalism is not responding to? Because if it's failing the entire society when uh, a crisis arises that affects the entire society, then it must fail individuals who uh, uh, find themselves in a bad position, right? And if we accept that the response to socialism, to uh, crisis uh, uh, when capitalism fails, as it's designed to do, is socialist policies and socialist ideas, then perhaps if we can identify other crises that exist in our society that perhaps we've been ignoring, or perhaps we've uh, 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 been moralizing about, uh, then maybe we can enact socialism to help those people uh, recover from the crisis of capitalism as well. Uh, so let's take a look at the obvious one, because we all see it every single day if you have eyes in your head. Uh, homelessness. If you are homeless, you are living in a crisis. There is no other way to describe it. You are, your day-to-day -day grind is one of uh, meager subsistence and basic survival. You are trying to uh, uh, eke out a living, usually by begging uh, or some other maybe not legal activity that you have been forced into because there has been no, uh, there has been no alternative. The, the moralists on this, uh, the, and I've begun to call them the uh, 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 apologists for the capitalist death cult, uh, they say pretty cleanly, oh, well, it's that individual's responsibility. He should get a job, right? He should uh, 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 pursue th this, that, or the other thing. Uh, that kind of detached delusional talk is uh, a, a pretty major um, aspect of the capitalist death cult because it's, sheer, it's strictly propaganda. Right? Like, you, you can't seriously believe that you're going to walk up to a homeless person who lives on the street uh, uh, and tell them, oh, hey, just get a job, like, bagging at Walmart, and uh, everything's going to be great for you. Uh, what you are seeing is a kind of societal um, abandonment, right? And it's being done publicly. It's, it's a public spectacle at this point, right? So common that we don't really pay attention to it anymore, right? 
down uh, at Dundas Square, there are these people, and, and, and they have microphones, and they're there talking about Jesus and how Jesus loves you all the time, right? And, and they're constantly talking, and it's a spectacle. Uh, and it's become so commonplace for us here in Ontario, or in, in Toronto, rather, we don't even bother to pause and look at it. It's, it's, it's just like a street sign or something, right? Maybe it's important if you need it, but... And the thing is, is, if you're homeless, nobody needs you, right? Nobody needs you. That's the system abandoning you. That's the that's how the system works. The capitalist system uh, uh, pretends as though it's a moral issue, and yet the design of capitalism ensures a certain level of unemployment and ensures a certain level of homelessness. As a guarantee, it's designed and baked into the system that... Uh, Resources are withheld purposefully by the capitalist class uh, from people who don't have the means to secure them. And if you don't have the specific skill set that the capitalist class is looking for in its labor pool, then too bad for you. Uh, this is a pretty common theme in capitalism. The exploitation of the populace for their labor is the capitalist system to a T. Because individuals are commodities, they're meant to be exploited, uh, their value is exclusively monetary and transactional, right? And so this creates homelessness in the society. Now that's a crisis, right? That's a, that's a major crisis that exists in society, right? If someone you knew, like if a friend or if a neighbor uh, was falling into homelessness, right? And you just stood by and watched it happen, right? I think, uh, uh, and even more than that, if that individual came to you and asked you for help and you said no, right? That would be, that person would be right to call that an abandonment. It would be an abandonment of your relationship. It would be an abandonment uh, uh, of them as a person and they would go to the street and they would be homeless and you would go along with your life and that would be normal uh, just like homelessness and poverty is normal in our society and so here is a crisis that capitalism creates uh, that exists in the society that uh, is a guarantee uh, it is a failure of the market system just like the COVID-19 virus has revealed uh, uh, a failure of the market system and the solution is the same solution we're using for the COVID-19. Socialism. Get that person a house. Get that person a place to live. Um, here's another crisis that's going on. Uh, and it relates to homelessness, which is the housing crisis. And the housing crisis is not complicated, right? Uh, uh, I, I have a mantra that I believe. Things are generally simple. Uh, they are made complex by people with a vested interest in making them complex. Uh, the more complex a thing can be, uh, the more difficult it is to analyze and critique. And most of the time when you analyze and critique the complexity, you find that that complexity was uh, unnecessary in the first place. Uh, so billionaires buy up the housing market, and that's it. That's the whole story, right? Billionaires are taking their money and they're using it to buy property that they then jack the rent up to drive other people out of it. And then uh, they are happy to sit on it empty. They don't care. Or maybe they'll turn it into Airbnbs or something like that. They don't care. Uh, it doesn't matter to them if uh, Airbnbs drive a bunch of people out of their homes. It doesn't matter to them if their properties sit empty. Uh, what matters to them is the money that they will get from turning it around. And let's not forget that housing actually operates as a safe haven for their wealth. That's one thing to remember, right? That the billionaire class has already shown they're willing to buy negative yield bonds, which are, are bonds that lose the money, so that in the case of an economic collapse, they don't lose all of that wealth. It's in bonds that 
are losing money, but they don't lose the bond when a collapse occurs, as we're in the midst of. The same holds true of property, which is why bil billionaires want to store their wealth in that asset. So there's this narrative that, oh, I want to turn it around, and I want to do that, and I want to do the other thing. And not really. Like they don't, they're not really that interested in turning that property around. They're not really that interested in selling those apartments, right? And if, if they do sell, want, sell that apartment, it really does need to be like pretty worth their while because they, the liquidity that they earn from selling the apartment uh, doesn't really matter to them because that liquidity can go away, right? That liquidity, uh, uh, it's not good to have your wealth in just sort of loose change floating around. You want it in a, in a solid asset. You want it in land, right? And so the only reason to sell a property if you're a billionaire is to uh, turn around and buy another property, right? So you want to constantly be on this kind of buying up sort of game. And in the meantime, uh, the rest of us are just looking for places to live and to spend our lives uh, uh, and to have like a little place we can hang our hat, right? So in the middle of this game of monopoly, which is exactly what it is, it's the game of monopoly, uh, in the middle of this big giant game of Monopoly, we're just trying to live our lives. Uh, and so that's a crisis, right? That's a crisis created by a capitalist system that commodifies our housing uh, and makes it more and more difficult for people to afford rent and makes it more and more easy for corporations and big giant businesses to jack your rent, which they do all the time. All the time they're raising your rent. They are constantly in a state of jacking your rent. And we stand here and we look at it and we go, oh, okay. When there are solutions, socialist solutions, right in front of your face. Uh, here's a real easy solution. Uh, uh, pass a move it or lose it law, right? There are all of these empty property. First of all, get rid of these Airbnbs. Get rid of them. They're, no, get rid of them. I, I, I don't care. There's there's like a fun little narrative that goes around. It's like, well, my grandma has an Airbnb and she should have her. I, I, I got to tell you, you know what's happening? Billionaires are buying up 20, 30, 40 properties, okay? Removing them from the housing market and turning them into Airbnbs. Specifically because they can. Uh, because... That way they don't have to actually be a renter. They don't actually need to take care of the property in the same way that they would have to take care of it. It, it loosens their ties to the property and it loosens their ties to the society that relies on that housing. Get rid of Airbnbs. Second of all, uh, pretty cleanly, we need a move it or lose it law. There's a lot of property that is sitting empty and it's been sitting empty for years because it is being used as a storage asset. That's all it's for. It isn't for, uh, uh, it isn't really for anything. And the people who own it don't really need the money from renting it to anyone. Uh, and in fact, in a lot of cases, they would look at the idea, the prospect of renting to let's say a small business and they would be like, oh man, that's a pain. What a, what a, what a pain. I'm a billionaire. I don't work, right? I don't do anything. Uh, I don't want to have responsibility. I don't want to uh, uh, take responsibility for that uh, uh, housing property or any of that. So I'm not going to. I'm just going to let it sit empty. It's fine. Uh, sure, I like, maybe I'll lose a little bit of money on it, but maybe I won't, right? Uh, uh, property taxes on empty properties are usually very, very low. Uh, billionaires uh, bribe politicians all the time to pass laws that allow them to sit on empty properties and not pay any rent on it. Uh, not pay any uh, uh, property tax on it. The, uh, I mean, that's the idea of sitting on empty property uh, was sort of foreign, even like 15 years ago. People were like, no, you want, don't you want to rent that property? Isn't that the whole point of having the property? No, they, they, they're storing their wealth in it. That's what they're doing. And so the, uh, and so the solution to that, of course, is just tell them you have one year to rent, sell, or fill that property with a business, uh, or we take it. And it's as simple as that. Uh, uh, gone is this idea that you can just sit 
on an empty property and and let it kind of fester uh and people will scream like oh man that'll uh, make the market crash yeah good yeah that's the idea we're supposed to make the market crash right we're supposed to make economies of death collapse we're supposed to make economies of death collapse uh, uh speaking of economies of death right climate change climate change what was another crisis uh, the liberal government had already declared climate change a, uh, a national emergency. Did corporate capitalism move? Did they, did, they, did they do anything? Has there been any shift in any direction? No? Oh, is that because capitalism fails? Because it doesn't respond rationally to crisis? Because it is only there to exploit and uh, uh, take away from the actual workers who are doing the actual job? Looks like that's the case. So once again, we find ourselves in a situation where there is a crisis that is going on, that is being generated by capitalism. That capitalism is this crisis-generating machine that has to, it has to, by its very definition and by, its, by the way it's structured, it has to generate these crises. Because... If you are a capitalist, you can't be conscious of the people around you, right? That's where the, the, the ideology of the capitalist death cult of individualism comes from, right? Uh, the, the idea that you're this rugged individual operating on an island and all uh, uh, that you, you have, you're not beholden to anyone, right? That is a failed ideology that, uh, uh, is obviously false, but it's very important for the capitalist death cult to maintain. Again, climate change. What's the solutions? Uh, full-scale stop of fossil fuel production. Just full-scale stop. Uh, we Look, we've just gone through this coronavirus. We can, we can do emergency measures. You want to see how us do some emergency measures? We're in the middle of it right now, right? What do you do? You maintain the basic income because what's going to happen? You're going to have a bunch of capitalist businesses collapse. Uh, it's just going to happen. And you know what? That, that's an inevitability. That's how capitalism works, baby. Capitalism is a snake that eats itself. And it's going to uh, uh, destroy itself. We're going to see all of these businesses fail anyway. Let's do it in a way that allows us to transition to a more rational economy. When people tell me like, oh, John, you want to destroy the economy? I'm like, yes, 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 I absolutely want to destroy this economy. I absolutely want to destroy the economy that is designed to destroy us by a capitalist death cult. Yes, absolutely, please, thank you. So, closing remarks... Capitalism generates crisis. Socialism is the response. Uh, uh, we can transfer uh, uh, shares to the workers. Uh, we can merge the workers and the capitalist class. We can eliminate the worthless middlemen who don't do any labor uh, and who uh, uh, seem to get all of the wealth out of the transaction. Uh, we can merge the workers and the shareholders so that they are the same people. And that, to me, is a, is a more complete solution than anything else that's being proposed. Merging the capitalist class and the worker class, allow, uh, 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 not allowing uh, banks to... Uh, uh, allowing workers to get loans from banking institutions in order to buy shares, in order to become the shareholder class, and phasing capitalism out of the arrangement completely. Uh, not allowing businesses to exist uh, where uh, uh, shareholders hold the majority of shares and workers get nothing. Uh, uh, if, a, if a business is to exist, the workers have to own the majority of the shares uh, and have to have the final say on, on what operates and how things operate in the society. Uh, it's, not a, uh, it's not an extreme position to take. Germany already does something like this. Uh, uh, if you have a corporation of over 2,000 people, uh, the workers own 50% of the shares in Germany. Uh, I think that that is a rational way forward. Uh, we have to do something to avoid uh, succumbing to the capitalist death cult. I hope you're all doing really well out there, guys. I love you all.
Good luck.